Hi, folks. This is uh, Bill Johnson. Thanks for joining us this evening. We're uh, we're going to give another uh, a minute or so to let people uh, join the call. I appreciate uh, you joining us this evening. We got a lot of important things to talk about, and I'm looking forward to hearing uh, from you. So, stand by. We'll get started here in just a minute. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started uh, because I I want to be a good uh, uh, good steward of your time. Thanks for joining us this evening, folks. My name is Bill Johnson, and I'm running for the United States House of Representatives for Congress. And uh, tonight we're conducting a live toll-free town hall meeting here uh, right over the phone. Uh, so if this is your first telephone town hall, let me explain to you a little bit how this works. Uh, first of all, I'm going to be live on the call the entire time. Uh, it will not be a, a staff member or anyone else. Uh, it will be me and me alone. Uh, and I'm going to be taking your questions. You can ask me a question anytime you like, starting right now, by simply pressing zero on your keypad on your phone. And from there, you're going to be directed to our question queue. Um, uh, once you ask your question, it will put you right back into the call. You will not be disconnected. And as we go along in the call, I'm going to be asking you a series of questions as well to kind of help stimulate the, uh, the discussion. Um, you'll be able to respond by pressing the corresponding numbers uh, on your keypad on your phone. You know, th these telephone town halls are a great way for you and me to have an honest and open dialogue about uh, the issues facing America today and about America's future. Uh, it's also an opportunity to, uh, for us to discuss the issues that are important to all of you across eastern and southeastern Ohio. Uh, tonight, I'd like to start off by discussing some things that I've been asked a lot about recently as I travel up and down uh, this, uh, this extremely large district. I don't know how many of you know how large this district is, but it goes from about an hour outside of Cleveland to an hour outside of Cincinnati, uh, and it goes as far west from the river uh, to, uh, to Zanesville, which is about three-quarters of the way to Columbus. So it's a big district, uh, and there's a lot of ground to cover and a lot of people to talk to. Uh, but tonight we want to talk about issues like uh, the terrorist threat, uh, ISIS or ISIL, uh, we want to talk about Obamacare and how that's affecting you. Uh, and we want to talk about energy independence, particularly how the, uh, the president's war on coal might be affecting you, and also how to keep the government regulators from stopping uh, this oil and gas boom that's providing so many jobs for us here in eastern and southeastern Ohio. Uh, as a reminder, folks, you can press zero anytime you'd like to ask a question, starting right now. Uh, and you can ask a question about these issues that I just discussed, or you can ask a question about any other issue, because remember, I work for you. It's not the other way around. My job is to listen to you and to respond to you, and that's what these calls are all about. You know, you can also learn more about my position on uh, all of the various issues by visiting my website, you can find that at www.billjohnsonleads.com. And you can also uh, go to my Facebook page uh, and search Bill Johnson Leads, and, uh, and that will help you get to, uh, to me also. Um, so while we're waiting for, uh, for you to start queuing up your questions, let me ask you a question. And again, I'll read the question to you, and you respond using the corresponding numbers on your keypad. First of all, I'd like to, to, to kind of see who we have on the line uh, and uh, uh, kind of help me uh, determine how best to, uh, to go about responding to your issues. So here's question number one for you. Which political party do you most identify with? Press one on your keypad if you're a Republican. Press two if you're a Democrat. Press three if you're an Independent. And uh, I'm going to start taking calls here in just a minute. Uh, and remember, if you have a question, just press zero to enter the question queue. 
and uh, then we'll get right to you. Let me read you my question again. Uh, uh, are you a Republican? Press 1 on your keypad. Uh, are you a Democrat? Press 2 on your keypad. And if you're an independent, press 3. Uh, I appreciate that feedback uh, very much. Let's, uh, let's get started with our first caller. We'll talk to uh, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. How are you this evening? I'm just fine, thank you. And you? I'm doing fine. I appreciate your call. Yes. I am wondering at this point what can be done to try to ensure that we have a, a, a Republican majority in both the Senate and the House. Well, that, that's, a, that's a, a tough question to answer, Catherine, because that's largely going to depend on, uh, on the voters. Um, in fact, it, it depends entirely on the voters. Uh, my hope is that the American people have seen that we have a dysfunctional Senate, uh, that, uh, that Senator Harry Reid has blocked our attempts to create jobs, uh, to uh, repeal and replace Obamacare, to rein in the EPA, uh, and a host of other pieces of legislation. Uh, so I'm with you. I certainly hope that we're able to put uh, Harry Reid on the back row of the Senate chamber uh, and get some responsible leadership in the Senate. But that's going to require a lot of work on everybody's part, including those of you on this phone call. Uh, it's going to take getting out and voting and making sure that your family and friends also get out and vote. So uh, that's, that's kind of where we are with that one, Catherine. Um, uh, the, the way our system works is the American people speak. Uh, elections have consequences, and, uh, and this election is very, very uh, important as well. Uh, so, if uh, folks, if you have a question, don't hesitate to uh, press zero on your uh, on your keypad. That'll put you into the question queue, and then you'll get right back into the call once you give us your question. Let's go to our next caller, and uh, we'll talk to uh, Dora in Salem. Hi, Dora. Hi there. I'm in an assisted living now, and I just I've always served on the election board at in Columbiana County. Right. And I don't know where I'm going to get to vote now. Well, um, uh, where are you located right now, uh, Dora? It's Salem address. Okay. I'm well, that's fine. In a, I'm in do you a, have the uh, do you do you have the number for the Columbiana County Board of uh, Elections? I think I do someplace here. Okay. Well, let me give it to you. Uh, uh, you got a pen? Yeah. Uh, that number is 330-424-1448. And, uh, you can call, yeah, you can, yeah, 1448, 330-424-1448. And, uh, you can call that number. And they can get you a, uh, a a ballot, a registration. They can tell you what you need to do. But here, I want to give you the number for my uh, for my campaign as well, uh, and we will follow up with you to make sure that uh, that you got your voter information. You ready to write this number down? Yep. It is seven four zero five six two four one one four. Four one one four. Right. You call either of those numbers, and we'll make sure that you get the information that you need to register to vote. Thanks for calling in, Dora. Uh, I appreciate that. I hope everybody is as committed to voting as you are. Let me ask you my question again, folks. Uh, this will kind of help me gauge uh, who we're talking to, um, uh, which political party do you most identify with? If you would be so kind, uh, if you're a Republican, press 1 on your keypad. If you're a Democrat, press 2. If you are an Independent, press 3. And uh, that gives me an idea of, uh, 
of who we're talking to. So uh, I appreciate you uh, giving me that information. Let's go to our next caller, Donald in Steubenville. How are you, Donald? Well, I'm, I'm a bit concerned. Uh, one of your ads that I heard, uh, you referenced the fact that Obamacare had misled us. Mm -hmm. Why the temerity in uh, saying what actually happened, that uh, we were lied to? Well, I think I've made it very, very clear that what the president has said, Donald, was uh, was a, a, a misrepresentation of the truth. Uh, the president said that if you wanted to uh, keep your doctor, that you could keep your doctor. That was a broken promise. He said that if you wanted to uh, uh, keep the health care plan that you had, that you would be able to do that. That, too, was a broken promise. He said that your health care premiums would go down when the truth of the matter is health care premiums have uh, seen a dramatic increase across the board. Uh, health care costs are rising. Uh, Donald, I've made it very, very clear uh, in every conversation I've had, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure how I could have been any more clear that the president misled us uh, with his broken promises. That was what I intended to say. That's what I said, and I, and I stand on that now. Obamacare is bad for the American people. It is bad for the people in our district here. Over $700 billion cut out of Medicare. Uh, $200 billion of that came out of Medicare Advantage, and I'm working hard to try and replace that money with a, with a piece of legislation that I authored called the Seniors Fairness Act that would eliminate a subsidy in Obamacare and replace the Medicare Advantage money that was cut by the president. So, uh, uh, Donald, I'm not sure how we're off, uh, while we're not on the same page, uh, misled, lied, uh, 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 broken promises. That all sounds the same to me. Uh, Obamacare uh, is not what America needs. Uh, the, the federal government cannot manage health care. In fact, if you want to see what federally uh, uh, managed health care looks like, look at what's happened to our veterans in the VA. That's what happens when the federal government tries to manage health care. So I'm, I'm simply trying to tell the truth, Donald, that's all. But I appreciate your call, buddy. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, let's go to our next caller, and we'll talk to uh, Skip down in Steubenville. Hi, Skip. Yes. Hey, how are you doing? I, You know, every time you call, I sit and I want to say something, and I get really emotional, and I hang up. I got a horror stories to tell. You know, I come home from Vietnam in 1967. I started work at Edison, the power plant there in Toronto. I worked there three and a half years, and they shut it down on account of pollution. At the same time that I got the day I got the job there, I come home and told my wife I got a job at Edison. They said, well, the mill called you. They want you to start. I said, no, I don't want to work in a mill. They shut it down. I went to Weirton Steel. I worked at Weirton Steel 22 days short of 35 years as a supervisor. Started out hourly. And I, uh, I lost my job there. I lost a third of my pension. Okay? And also, you know, I hear you talking about Obamacare. I took my grandkids, and I'm dad to them. I put them on my Blue Cross Blue Shield. I could not even send them to the same doctors that they were allowed to go to when they was on the welfare system, okay? And, I mean, I can go on and on. You talk about the VA. I'm being denied all kind of stuff. I see people coming into this country getting everything that they don't want to give me. And, uh, I mean, I can go on and on. All I wonder is, when does the EPA stop shutting places down? And when is the air clean enough? Because every job I ever had, I lost because of it being shut down by the EPA. Okay? And, I mean, I can go on and on about the, about the VA. I was up there six days because of my blood pressure, and it was terrible. I mean, I mean, I can go on and on and on and on. And I don't want to get that emotional, and I don't want to have myself look stupid talking about things that really well, upset uh, me. Well, first of all, Skip, let me tell you that uh, I, I appreciate your service to our country. And, uh, and if anyone has never said this to you on behalf of a grateful nation, uh, let me tell you that I'm glad you're home, and, uh, and I appreciate so much uh, your, your service to our country. Um, uh, let's go, uh, first of all, I want to address your VA issue. If you're being denied benefits that you think you've got coming to you under the VA, I want you to call this number, 
562-4114. That is my uh, campaign office, uh, but, uh, but I will put you in contact with my official office where we can address that issue for you. As far as the EPA goes, uh, I am on the exact same page as you are. Uh, what the EPA is doing in its attempt to shut down coal-fired power plants is extremely irresponsible. Um, uh, right now today, coal provides about 60-plus percent of the energy here in Ohio alone. Coal is used to provide energy in 48 of the 50 states. It's mined in 25 states. And, uh, and, and I can tell you that in this last winter that we had, uh, in this polar vortex, we saw, uh, uh, we were one coal-fired power plant away from having rolling brownouts and blackouts because there's not enough energy on the grid. Um, I agree with you, Skip, 100% that the, that the EPA is out of control. Uh, we have passed legislation multiple times in the U.S. House of Representatives that would rein in the EPA. In fact, one of the pieces of legislation is called the RAINS Act. It stands for Regulations by the Executive in Need of Scrutiny. And what that legislation does is that it requires the EPA and other regulating agencies to come back to Congress for approval anytime they want to implement a regulation that costs our economy more than $100 million. Now, I know $100 million sounds like a lot to, to, to you, and it's a lot to me. But the reality is is that federal regulations take over a trillion dollars a year out of our economy. And the EPA needs to stop. And, uh, and I'm fighting every day to try and do that. That goes back to what our previous caller said. How do we uh, ensure uh, that we put Harry Reid on the back row of the Senate chamber? We need responsible leadership in the Senate, and that's what makes this this upcoming election so very, very important. So I appreciate your call very much. Thanks a lot. Um, hey, let's uh, let me ask you my question one final time: uh, Which political party do you most closely identify with? Uh, press one on your keypad if you're a Republican. Press 2 on your keypad if you're a Democrat. Press 3 on your keypad if you're an independent. Uh, I'd appreciate your feedback. Thank you very much. Um, let's go to our next caller. And if you'd like to ask a call, by the way, or ask a question, by the way, press 0 and it'll put you into the question queue. Let's go to our next caller, uh, David, down in New Middletown. Hi, David. Hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Good. Uh- my question is about this ISIS threat. It, uh, it seems to me that even though all Islamic people are not terrorists, it seems that the vast majority of them are remaining silent about the terrorist issue. Like, I don't see a lot of them speaking out against it. And I'm wondering, is it, is it possible that even though they're not terrorists, they may be in agreement with the terrorists? And if so, why don't we go there like like Sherman took Atlanta and just destroy the whole place? I mean, well, we can't pussyfoot around with these people. We've well, David, been, uh, we've yeah, never been David, successful in a military campaign where we've tried to fight a political war. It has to either be an all-out war. I mean, the only thing these people understand is violence. See, we need to break their will to fight. Yeah, David, I, uh, I, I have similar views that you do. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, an organization, ISIS is an organization, uh, that is a threat to the civilized world, uh, and they need to be eliminated. And we cannot do that by snipping around the edges. Um, now, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, David, but we actually do have some of our Arab allies that are supporting this uh, air campaign, uh, the United Arab Emirates, uh, Jordan, uh, Bahrain, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia uh, are also flying missions in this, uh, in this bombing attack on, uh, on ISIS. They, uh, some of our Arab friends in the Middle East recognize uh, that this has got to stop, and it's got to stop now. And I'm hoping that other uh, Middle Eastern uh, uh, countries 
also see it and that we begin to get help from them as well. Uh, but, you know, the real crux of the problem is that the president needs to listen to our military commanders. Uh, uh, I was in the Air Force for 26 and a half years, part of that during the Vietnam era. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, uh, the reason that uh, things turned out in Vietnam the way that they did was because politicians and bureaucrats were trying to run the war from the White House instead of letting our military commanders call the shots. Uh, the president should go to our military commanders and say, destroy this group. What do you need to do it with? He should then come back to the Secretary of Defense and the Congress and, uh, and make the case to provide our military commanders what they need. And then he needs to build a coalition of our uh, friends and allies in the Middle East and across Europe and the rest of the world to join forces to destroy with overwhelming force this barbaric, uh, brutal group called ISIS. Uh, and, and I agree with you. The only thing they understand is force stronger than their own. Uh, that's, that's how they're engineered. So you and, I, uh, you and I are on the same page for most of that, most of that and I, I appreciate you bringing that question up. Let's, um, let's go to Belmont County now um, and talk to a, a caller there. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing very well, thanks. Good. Tell me about uh, your views on gun control. Uh, and uh, do you personally have a concealed carry? Uh, well, let me answer your second question first. Absolutely, I have a concealed carry. In fact, um, let me pull it out here. Does it have a Does it have a serial number on it? Um, if it does, I'll read it off to you, and you can go no, check it out okay. yourself. No, yeah. I believe you. That's okay. What What's yep. your views on uh, gun control? Well, uh, number one, I have fought and will continue to fight to make sure that the terms and the conditions of the U.S. Constitution and the Second Amendment are fully enforced. And what does that say? It says that the right of, uh, of the American people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And so I will not stand idly by and watch the federal government try to restrict uh, the, uh, the rights of law-abiding citizens uh, to uh, to have access to, to keep and bear arms. Bottom line, I have an A rating with the NRA. I'm a lifetime member of the NRA. I'm a very, very strong supporter of the Second Amendment, and I gather from your call that you are too, so thank you for your stand on that as well. Let's, uh, let's go to our, uh, our next question, if I could, and um, uh, this will help me also. What method of voting do you plan to use in this November 4th election? Uh, on your keypad, please respond with this. If you plan to vote by absentee, by mail, press 1. If you plan to early vote at your county board of elections, press 2. If you plan to vote at your polling place on election day, press 3. Or press 4 if you do not plan to vote at all. Uh, that uh, that will help me to decide uh, how I can uh, how I can help those of you who might need some some help with voter registration. Let me read it again. What method do you plan to use to vote in the November fourth election? Uh, press one if you plan to vote by absentee mail. Uh, press two if you plan to early vote uh, at the county board of elections. Press three if you plan to vote in person at a polling place on election day, and press 4 if you don't plan to vote at all. And uh, by the way, if you press 4, I certainly hope that you will reconsider that. Uh, you are the board of directors. Uh, the strength of our nation is not in our government. It's not in our institutions. It's in the indomitable spirit of the American people. And the only way we lose and the only way the world loses is that if America gives up, your vote really does mean something, and I hope that you'll get out and vote. Let's go to Newcomerstown and talk to Cheryl. How are you, Cheryl? I'm fine, thank you. You? Yes, I'm doing well, thank you. Okay. Um, I have major issues with the Obamacare system. I'm trying right now 
to get some prescriptions for some acid reflux that they're denying. I've done everything that they asked me to. Even the doctor's office has called and tried to get a peer-to-peer conversation with the insurance company and the drug company, and they still are denying it, and no one will give us a straight answer as to why. Now, my question is, how long do the American people have to go through this before somebody's going to do something about it? And if we have to be on it, why does not the whole government have to be on it? Because I guarantee you, if all of them were, it would be changed instantly. Yeah. Um, uh, Cheryl, let me answer your first question first. Here's what I'd like you to do. The, the, the situation that you just described where you are being denied access to medication that you need and that your doctors have told you that you need, uh, that is an issue that I will have to handle through my official office. So please call this number, 740-562-4114. Tell them that you spoke to me on tonight's telephone town hall, and, um, and we will start a constituent services case to address that issue on your prescription medications. Let me read you the number again. It's 740-562-4114. Call that number and we'll be glad to help you. Uh, The the, the other two questions that you asked, one, uh, I have voted consistently and will continue to support the full repeal of the health care law and replacing it with patient-centered solutions that put you and your doctor back in charge of your health care at a rate that you can afford. And here's how we do that. We put uh, the American people uh, back in charge of their own health care by giving them full and open access to invest in health savings accounts so that they can put away money of their own at a much co- at a much lower cost than buying a massive health insurance policy uh, so that they can pay for routine care and prescriptions with that. Number two, tort reform. Let's keep our doctors in the operating rooms, the delivery rooms, and the treatment rooms rather than the courtrooms. That's going to drive down malpractice insurance rates. That's going to let doctors lower their rates of service. That's going to lower the cost of health care. Let's also make health care competitive from job to job and from state to state. Why should health carriers, uh, uh, the insurance companies, have a captive audience? When you change jobs and your health condition has not changed, why do you get bumped off of your health insurance policy? That's not right. We put competition back into the system. That will do what it always does here in America. It will increase the quality and it will lower the cost. We have a history and a legacy of doing that. Now, there's a couple of things in the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, that I think we should consider keeping. Uh, One of those is allowing young people to stay on their parents' health insurance policy until they're age 26. You know, right now today, about 40 to 45 percent of our college graduates are either unemployed or underemployed. And uh, uh, they are the ones that this health care law is asking to pay a disproportionate share of the cost for health care. They're the ones getting the higher premiums. And so I think it's a good thing uh, that these unemployed college graduates can stay on their parents' health insurance policy until they get on their feet. And then the other thing that I think we should consider keeping is I don't believe health insurance carriers should be able to exclude coverage based on pre-existing conditions. I don't think anybody woke up today saying, hey, I think I'll have a heart attack for lunch or or I'm going to go get cancer next week. Nobody plans to be sick. And when you are struck with a with a catastrophic illness uh, that's chronic and persistent, um, uh, insurance companies should not be able to exclude coverage uh, based on those conditions. So those are some of the things that I have ad- advocated for and will continue to advocate for. The final thing that I wanted to say based on your question, though, uh, ma'am, I am on an Obamacare-approved policy. Uh, every member of my staff is on Obamacare. Um, the media would like you to believe that uh, that every government official, especially every elected government official, uh, has exempted themselves from from Obamacare, and and that is simply not true. 
my staff and I are are all on Obamacare. So uh, I I hope that uh, that resolves that problem or that question in your mind. But thanks for bringing it up. Hey, let me ask you a question again, folks. For those of you who uh, who may have just joined our call, um, what method do you plan to use to vote? in the November 4th election. Press 1 in your, on your keypad if you plan to vote absentee by mail. Press 2 on your keypad if you plan to early vote in person at your county board of election. Press 3 uh, on your keypad if you plan to vote in person at your polling place on election day. And press 4 if you don't plan to vote at all. And uh, uh, if you would like to ask a question, please press zero. We'll get you into the question queue, and uh, and we'll get started. So uh, let's go to Carolyn in Caddis. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, Carolyn. I am. Did they give you my question? No, uh, no. Uh, tell me what your question is. I want the uh, I want the other listeners. Everybody can hear you, so I want the other callers to hear your question as well. So go ahead. I'm really concerned about the the uh, regulations that the EPA is trying to put on the coal industry. That's where we get better than fifty percent of our electricity from. All the other stuff is great, but coal's the one is the strong leader here. So. When they do, if they do that, that means our electricity is going to double in cost with these regulations that they're going to put on, which puts my summer electric bill well over $300 if it's doubled. And that, it's just too much. I couldn't afford that. Uh, so I, 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 we need to really, we need to address this. I, I agree with you, Carolyn, and I have been leading the effort uh, to, to fight the battle against the president's war on coal since I came to Congress to be your voice in January of 2011. I have had uh, legislation pass the House uh, multiple times, most recently uh, at the end of August. Uh, I'm sorry, at the, uh, yes, right at the end of August, uh, that would uh, prevent the, uh, uh, the president and the EPA from, uh, from virtually shutting down uh, underground coal mining in America. Um, and we've passed legislation in the House to stop the EPA from advancing with their uh, rules that are shutting down the coal-fired power plants. I could not agree with you more. You know, in this last winter, and you might not have been on the phone when I talked about this earlier, uh, this last winter we were one coal-fired power plant away from uh, from rolling brownouts and blackouts uh, rationing of, of energy. Uh, we're getting, you know, hardworking taxpayers are getting squeezed uh, at the uh, at the grocery store. They're getting squeezed at the gas pump. Uh, they're getting squeezed with higher health care costs. Now they're going to get squeezed with higher costs to heat and cool their homes, and that is simply not right. And I am fighting for that every single day to make sure that uh, that this administration backs off on its war on coal. I want to tell you, though, uh, that my opponent um, has voted uh, to uh, uh, devastate the coal industry in Ohio. Uh, in 2010, when my opponent was in the State House, uh, she voted uh, for a budget that, in the words of the president of the Ohio Coal Association, would have been devastating to the coal industry. Uh, in spite of what you might hear uh, over the media or in mail, uh, my opponent is not a friend of the coal industry, and she is not a friend of coal uh, families here in eastern and southeastern Ohio. So I appreciate you bringing that uh, that question up. Let's go talk to uh, Barb in uh, Jacobsburg. Hi, Barb. Well, hi. How are you doing, Mr. Johnson? I am doing very well. My name is Bill. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, Mr. Johnson. Anyway, <laughs> why, qu my question is, it in the Constitution, it does have a clause in there that says that our Congress is responsible for the purse strings for the United States of America. My mm -hmm. questions are, why aren't we shutting down the EPA 
number two and this war on coal because my electric bill has doubled already. And then my other question is this lowest learner thing in the IRS. Don't you think that we should cut their pays and she should not be getting paid for not doing her job properly? I mean, I'm an American. I want something done. And if that means, if that was me out here, Mr. Johnson, they would throw my butt under the jail, not in it, and then they'd be compla- Then people complain about that too. Sorry. Yeah. Now that's okay. That's, that's okay, Bob. Don't hang up your phone, Bob. Stay with me because I tried to write down your three questions so I could answer them all, but I'm not sure I got them. So let me start uh, on the first one, and then uh, I want to get the, the the second and third question again. The Constitution actually says this, Bob. It says that all funding decisions start in the United States House of Representatives. Uh, But that's not where the funding legislation ends. For Congress to adequately control the purse strings, it requires both chambers of the Congress to work. You've got the House of Representatives and you've got the Senate. Do you know how many times we've sent the Senate a budget that would not only balance, but that would begin to reel in and defund the EPA. We've sent it to them now. We did it in 2011, 12, 13, and 14. All four years since I've been in office, we have sent the Senate a budget that would do much of what you're talking about. But the Senate, which is controlled uh, by the Democrat senator from, uh, from Nevada, Harry Reid, will not take that legislation up, will not pass it on to the president. So my my point to you is this. It takes both chambers of Congress in order to control the purse strings. The House of Representatives cannot do it alone. Uh, What was your second question? My question is, there is a very definite war on coal. My electric bills have almost doubled already. Can you imagine what's going to happen if we close down any more power plants? I mean, my gosh, we haven't built a power plant for 20-some years. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, uh, Bob, you're, you're exactly right. You may have heard me mention a little earlier uh, 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 what happened this last uh, cold winter. We were one coal-fired power plant away from, uh, from having uh, energy rationing. Um, where you could not burn your furnace all day uh, or at certain times during the day. And I've got manufacturers right now, Barb, that are getting phone calls from the, uh, from the utility companies asking them to idle their plants uh, for certain days because there's not enough energy on the grid to meet the peak demand. So uh, it is a very real concern for me. That's why I've been leading the fight against the president's law on coal since I came to Congress in 2011. I have had legislation passed multiple times that would begin to rein in the president's war on coal, but that legislation sits idle in the Senate. It goes back to what I said about both chambers having to work together. Uh, So I'm I'm working it. We'll continue to fight it. And uh, uh, good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, uh, we'll, we'll get some help in the Senate in November, and we'll be able to, uh, to really take some action on these things. What was your third question again? I'm sorry. And my third question is about the IRS targeting, like the Tea Parties and all the other people that they did target, conservatives. I don't understand since we have quite a few of her emails and items, I know that ISIS is important right now, but, you know, the sad part of it is if we, the people, did what she did, targeted anybody because we stepped on somebody else's rights, like, you know, taking God out of everything, my question is, why isn't she in jail waiting for a hearing compared to us when we do something bad, they stick us in jail, and then we wait for a hearing. And if that was me, they'd stick me under the jail. Well, uh, Barb, I I can't explain to you why 
Uh, Eric Holder and the Justice Department refuses to move on this issue. That's what the Justice Department is supposed to do. Uh, Congress has certainly uh, given the Justice Department enough investigative material to know that uh, that uh, misconduct occurred by executives uh, in the IRS. Um, I can assure you that the investigation of Mrs. Lerner and the IRS is not over. It is still ongoing. You can only imagine uh, how uncooperative this president has been on those issues. And let's, uh, Barb, let's wrap this up and go to somebody else for a question. I appreciate all the ones that you asked. Uh, let me ask my question one more time. What method do you plan to use to vote in the November 4th election? If you haven't already answered, please tell me. Uh, do you plan to vote by absentee uh, through the mail? If so, press 1 on your keypad. Uh, press 2 on your keypad if you plan to uh, do early voting at your county board of elections. Uh, press 3 on your keypad if you plan to vote in person at your polling location on election day. And press 4 on your keypad if you do not plan to vote at all. Now, uh, just so you know, I cannot tell uh, who pressed what number on your keypad. I only get uh, total numbers here. So I, I hope the six of you who said that you don't plan to vote in November, I hope that you will reconsider your position. Your vote does matter. Uh, you've heard from some of our veterans on this phone call. I myself served for 26 and a half years to protect all America's individual freedoms and liberties, and one of those liberties is to, the right to vote. And so I hope you will execute that right. Your vote count, your voice matters. Uh, let's go talk to uh, Lee Emery. Hi, Lee. Hi, Bill. How you doing, buddy? Okay. Uh, first off, uh, prior calls you had a... a Vietnam veteran call, and you give them a number to call when you have issues? Right. Okay. Could you repeat that number for me, please? I sure can. I sure can. You ready? Yep. Here it is. 740 yes. 562 yes. 4114. Okay. All right. Uh, Thank you for that information. And the small farmer with, connected with the Farm Bureau and the EPA is uh, really making it, going to try to make it really difficult for us with our little creeks and ditches and runoffs and ponds. Is uh, How do you stand on fighting the EPA on that? Lee, I, I didn't hear a question. What What is your question? Okay. <clears throat> the EPA is trying to control all the little creeks and ditches and ponds throughout the country. And, you know, i got a creek that right now it's bone dry. Most of the year it's got four or five inches of water in it. Oh, I, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about now, Lee. Uh, Lee, we passed legislation right before we left uh, uh, to go into this October work period. We passed legislation that would prevent the EPA from doing this. And uh, that legislation now sits in the Senate. Um, it is something that uh, I would strongly encourage you to, uh, to call uh, Sherrod Brown, Senator Sherrod Brown and Senator Rob Portman, uh, and express your concern to them. Let your voice be heard on this. The House has already acted to stop the EPA, but we're going to have to help from, have some help from the Senate to get it done. Appreciate you bringing that up, buddy. You had to. Hi, Maggie. How are you? I'm fine, Representative Johnson. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, you did answer one of the questions earlier, um, but is it possible to fully repeal, repeal Obamacare? But since then, I've come up to another question, and 
Is the president breaking the law with some of his executive actions? And if he is, why doesn't Congress arrest him? Well, the, <laughs> uh, the, the president has broken uh, the law in some of his executive actions around Obamacare, uh, and a lawsuit has been filed. Uh, you know, uh, people don't get arrested uh, for civil actions. Uh, they get arrested for criminal actions, and uh, but uh, there has been a lawsuit that has been filed by the U.S. House of Representatives against the president for some of his executive overreach as it relates to Obamacare. Now, how long it's going to take that uh, lawsuit to um, uh, to work its way through the court system, I'm not 100 percent sure, but uh, uh, it is on its way. It is working its way through the system, and uh, with, without supporting the Senate, it has been extremely difficult to hold this president accountable uh, under the Constitution, but we are making every effort available to us under the law to do that. You know, I strongly believe in the Constitution of the United States. I believe that we are a nation governed by uh, the rule of law, not by the law of rules, where whoever's in the White House or whoever's in the Senate majority leader position or the Speaker of the House position gets to make up the rules. So I don't support Congress breaking the rules any more so than I do the President breaking the rules. And and we are executing uh, to uh, the extent that the law allows us to do uh, oversight and trying to rein in this President, the real crux of the problem is that we get no support and no help from the Senate. And um, I'm hoping that's going to change in November, and with your help, it will. Let's go to our next caller. How are you doing, Gary? Uh, pretty good there, Congressman. Again, thank you for filling my question there. I guess I have a lot of concerns, like most Americans, but the, the, the $17.8 trillion debt, you know, growing massively every day, and I know it takes uh, the Senate and the, the President to, to push along on this. And I know I heard a Nancy, a Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi speak uh, a few times that we've, we've cut everything out of the budget we can cut out. There's no more, there's no more uh, pennies uh, that we can pull from the, the deficit. But, boy, when does the time come to reach this $20 trillion and $25 trillion and when there's no point of no return, I mean, when is there going to be some down-to-earth action to think, boy, we've got to we've got to get a hold of this thing, or our inability to fight, you know, the wars around the country, the world? And I think that's one reason why Putin is is pushing us because he knows we can't really sometimes have the 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 the, 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 the funds to do some of the things we need to do around the world. And I'm not saying we're police around the world, but. What's your outlook in the future about the deficit there? Well, I, uh, at some point, Gary, we are going to get this uh, deficit uh, and and the debt under control. Are we going to get it under control with this president? Um, that's going to be a hard task because this president has shown through his actions he wants higher taxes. Uh, he even said openly that he doesn't believe we need to worry about balancing the budget. Uh, I'll go back and, and remind you again that since 2011, uh, when I came into office, we have passed a balanced budget in the House of Representatives for the last four years, and we will continue to work on palace, passing a balanced budget. I also supported legislation that said that if we didn't pass a budget, uh, that members of Congress and the Senate, uh, members of the House and the Senate, should not get paid, because that's one of the most important things that they're supposed to do is pass a budget because, as a, as a previous caller uh, pointed out, Congress is the one that provides the funding uh, for everything that the federal government does. Look, I, I agree with you 100%. We cannot keep spending money that we do not have. We cannot continue to put this burden on the backs of our children and our grandchildren, and we must get it under control. That's going to require leadership, and that's going to require a change in the Senate, and it's going to require a change in the White House. We've got a couple of important elections coming up, uh, and I, I hope that, uh, that we will see Americans rise up 
and let their voices be heard on this very, very important issue. So uh, thanks a lot for your, uh, for your question. I'm going to ask you my question one more time. Um, what method do you plan to use to vote in the November 4th election? Press 1 on your keypad if you plan to vote absentee by mail. Press 2 on your telephone keypad if you plan to early vote in person at your Board of Elections. Press 3 on your keypad if you plan to vote in person at your polling place on Election Day. And press 4 if you don't plan to vote at all. Uh, let's go to our our next caller. Okay, uh, Nelson, how are you, sir? Congressman. Yes, sir. It's an honor to speak with you. It's an honor to hear from you. Thank you for your service, Nelson. My name is uh, Nelson. I'm from Negley. I have. I, I, I thank you for your service. I am a. Uh, there's no such thing as an ex marine. I'm a marine. I served from fifty nine to sixty three. The war, in my opinion, was not handled correctly. I saw it as a police action, and we lost many, many, many people, many friends of mine. That's just the beginning. I am 72 years old. I'm living on Medicare. My wife has MS. She's required to have Obamacare. We've applied. We sent our first payment in for $160. Then we get, oh, you get so, I'm, I'm, I'm exasperated. Then we get make, mail back that, well, they didn't get her check yet, so she owes another $160. Then we get a bill that she has to pay six months. Then we get another notice that says that they evaluated her incorrectly. They'll honor that for this year. But next year, it's going to go up much more. Yeah, hey uh, Nelson. Yeah, Nelson. Let me help you with. Let me help you with this. Um, I'm. Uh, have you got a pen in your hand? I need you to write down a telephone number, Nelson. Yes, yes, sir. I, yes, sir, Congressman. I do. Okay. Here we go. You ready? Call this number. It is seven four zero five six two four one one four. Tell them your name and uh, remind them that we spoke on the telephone town hall. They are going to get you in contact with my official office, and uh, and we're going to dig in to this Medicare issue for you uh, because I don't I don't like what I'm hearing, and and it probably doesn't surprise you, Nelson, that I hear these kind of stories all the time. Uh, the 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 rollout of this health care law has been terribly terribly flawed sir 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 please let me say something it's horrible sure. it, it's absolutely horrible we can't get any help she she is a couple of credits short of even getting medicare or uh, uh, ssi or medicaid i'm 72 years living on social security we, we need help sir well call that number call that number and you're going to get help okay sir thank you well, you are certainly welcome. Nelson, I look forward to talking with you, and we'll uh, we'll talk again, I'm sure, through my official office, okay? I hope so, sir. All right. God bless you, my friend. Have a good evening. God bless We're you. going to take time, folks, for uh, for one more call, and uh, let's, uh, uh, let's go talk to um, – Let's go talk to Scott down in uh, East Rochester. Hi, Scott. Senator. Yes. Is it good evening? Uh, I have a question on the coal. Yes. It seems that we're devaluing our coal, so the it'll be really cheap for somebody like the Chinese to acquire. Well, and well, Scott. Yeah, uh, Scott. I don't. I don't. I don't hear uh, of anyone that has that as a motive. Um, uh, no one wants the Chinese to uh, to continue growing their economy faster than America's economy. 
Now, I, I think what we've got is just a, a gross lack of understanding on the part of President Obama and, uh, and his liberal allies in the Senate and others who don't understand uh, that coal has provided the backbone of America's innovative uh, and competitive engine for generations. And, uh, and I think it is absolutely uh, uh, an atrocity that the Chinese are building coal-fired power plants uh, uh, like, like Johnny Appleseed. I mean, they're springing up everywhere. And, and here in America, our president wants to close ours down. Look, that's what the war on coal is. And, and I think what you're basically saying is uh, that our federal government doesn't seem to place a value on coal and the value that coal has provided to America in terms of the jobs that it's created and the energy that it has provided for so long. Uh, my friend, I am fighting that battle every single day. I will continue fighting that battle uh, to make sure that, that, that the jobs and the quality of life uh, and the choices for hardworking families here in eastern and southeastern Ohio are protected. I'm not going to stop until we stop the president's war on the coal industry. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Folks, I, uh, I appreciate so much your, uh, your dialogue tonight. Uh, I think it has been instructive and informative. It's really given me uh, some ideas on uh, 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 where you stand on the issues and the issues that are important to you. So uh, uh, let's do this again sometime soon. And uh, if you didn't get a chance to ask your question, if you would like to, uh, uh, to hang on the line, you'll be able to, uh, to uh, leave us a voicemail, and um, uh, we'll take your question, and then we'll get back to you. You can also find out more about my uh, position on the issues by visiting my website at billjohnsonleads.com, or you can give us a call toll-free at that number. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, that number is 740-562-4114. Or you can visit me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Bill Johnson Leads or on Twitter at Johnson Leads. Thanks for listening, folks. I really appreciate uh, the feedback that I've gotten from you tonight. We'll do this again sometime soon. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. We'll talk to you soon.